Hello, in today's lecture, we will see the frequency modulation in a mathematical approach. So, in modulation, there is a type of modulation normally called the angle modulation, which is basically a combination of the frequency modulation and phase modulation. The frequency modulation is a technique in which the frequency of the carrier which is getting adjusted in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. Whereas in the case of phase modulation, the phase of the carrier signal getting adjusted in accordance with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. So either the phase or the frequency is getting adjusted according to the amplitude or the magnitude of the modulating signal and these two techniques like frequency modulation and phase modulation together they call as the angle modulation. So let us look at what is meant by the frequency modulation as we have already defined now the frequency modulation is a technique in which the frequency of the carrier is varied in accordance with the instantaneous amplitude of the modulating signal. So in, in this uh, case, the amplitude and phase is remains the constant while the frequency changes with the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. So let us like, look at a, an example here. Assume that we have a signal that is going to be modulated, which we call as the modulating signal. And it is a low frequency signal whose uh, peak value is indicated by EM. And uh, EC is uh, another signal which is a high frequency signal whose magnitude is, uh, uh, sorry, whose magnitude is EC, it is a carrier signal whose magnitude is EC and which is a high frequency uh, signal. Now when the modulation is going to happen, you can see that when this particular signal is getting uh, added because the amplitude of this signal is increasing, as a result the frequency is getting, uh, uh, you know, high, uh, frequency becoming more and more while for the negative cycles, since the, the amplitude of the modulating signal is decreasing, you can see that the frequencies, you know, become you know, smaller and smaller. So the frequency getting adjusted in accordance with the modulating signal amplitude. So this is the actual thing. So here we can see that there is no frequency variation here because the signal is zero and the signal is increasing because the modulated signal is increasing as a result you can see the uh, you know the frequency become higher or the maximum frequency you can see when uh, when you know we have the peak here for example when the signal is at uh, em you can see the maximum frequency is going to be observed here the same manner as the amplitude decreases you know the frequency is getting uh, smaller and smaller or this we can the frequency becomes smaller and we can see that the the minimum frequency uh, when the amplitude is like the negative uh, peak. Now in FM, uh, one of the uh, important topic or one of the important uh, um, uh, definition is the, uh, the term is the modulation index and the modulation index is normally indicated by MI. The modulation index is defined as the ratio of the frequency deviation or the change in the, de the frequency to the modulating frequency. So it is indicated by the equation del, this is this is the del mf uh, or the mi, sorry the mi is uh, given by the modulation index mi is given by del divided by fm where del is the frequency deviation divided by fm, this is supposed to be mi. Now in fm, mi is normally uh, keeping is above 1, so the meaning that if it is above 1, the, the frequency is uh, lesser and the deviation is normally more or higher. So modulation index of the fm decide the uh, bandwidth of the FM wave and the number of sidebands in FM wave that we are going to discuss in the you know the coming slides. Now another important terminology in the FM is the deviation ratio. The modulation index corresponding to maximum deviations and maximum modulating frequency is called the deviation ratio. So this is uh, a ratio which is applicable to the maximum uh, index which corresponds to the maximum deviation 
and to the maximum. So if you are uh, going to look at the modulation index for a maximum case, then we reach a point called the deviation ratio and which is given by del max divided by you know f max. In FM broadcasting, the maximum value of deviation is limited to 75 kilohertz. So this is a practical limitation. And the similarly, the maximum modulating frequency, the input frequency is also limited to 15 kilohertz. Now percentage of modulation index of FM. Now the percentage MI is calculated by the equation actual deviation divided by the maximum allowable deviation. The percentage modulation is defined as the ratio of the actual frequency deviation produced by the modulated signal to the maximum allowable frequency deviation. So this is going to tell you the margin. Now let us look at the mathematical representation of an FM wave. So assume that this is our modulated signal which is a low frequency sinusoidal signal and uh, just for the our sake of uh, uh, understanding either we can consider it's like EM cos omega mt or uh, EM sin omega mt just for the convenience we are keeping as EM cos omega mt. So capital EM indicate the instantaneous value or the peak value uh, whereas the uh, the EM small EM is the instantaneous value. So this is the instantaneous value and this is the, the maximum value and omega M is the frequency in radians and time is I mean T is in time. So the cost term taken just for the you know purpose of simplicity. So now omega is normally calculated by the equation 2 pi FM where FM is the maximum frequency of the modulating uh, signal. Now if you look at the carrier signal, the carrier signal is similarly we can represent uh, using the notation EC, small EC that is equal to capital EC into sin omega CT plus phi. So here EC is the instantaneous value of the carrier signal whereas the capital EC indicate the maximum value of the carrier signal and the omega C is the angular velocity which is calculated by the equation uh, 2 pi FC. And and the phi uh, indicate the, the phase angle. So this is the basic uh, equation for the carrier. And Fc is the carrier frequency. So we have two equations, important equations, number equation number one, which is Em, small em is equal to capital Em into cos omega mt. And the second equation, Ec sin omega ct plus phi. Now the Fm wave, So the FM is nothing but a deviation of frequency. So what you are going to see in the uh, FM waveform, there is a deviation in the, in the frequency depends on the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. So we can refer F is equal to FC which is the carrier into 1 plus K EM cos omega MT. So this is equation indicate that if this particular part which is K EM cos omega MT which is nothing but the, the modulating uh, signal. If this signal is 0 then your frequency will be F. For example if you look at this particular uh, signal we can see that at this particular instant the uh, input frequency I means for the, 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 the magnitude or the amplitude of the input signal is 0 as a result we will get the same FC. Now as the amplitude increases this frequency this amount is going to be getting added with it. And as a result, there is a frequency deviation that you are going to observe. And this frequency deviation is directly proportional to the, the magnitude of the instantaneous input signal. Now the maximum deviation for this uh, particular signal will occur when omega mt is equal to plus or minus 1. So when this, is, uh, this, uh, this quantity is going to, to be 1, then we are going to have an equation fc into 1 plus km. So this equation we are going to get, it can be plus or minus uh, you know, KEM because the, uh, the cosine wave or the sine wave has got the positive as well as the negative value. So this, the, uh, we have to have, an, uh, we will get an equation that F equal to FC into 1 plus or minus KEM. If we expand this equation, we will get F is equal to FC, which is the carrier frequency, plus or minus KEM FC. So this is the extra deviation that is going to get, you know, from the standard, what you call the carrier signal. So if this, this part is 0, then you will get the, the actual carrier, carrier frequency. But if uh, if there is some amb ambiguity is that this, amb this, this part could be like, a, a, you know, the positive side it can be positive or can be negative. So accordingly, 
you will have a positive deviation in the frequency or negative deviation in the frequency. So, this part is something is very important for us and that we can define as which is called the del. So, the maximum deviation that is del is equal to maximum deviation del is equal to so, the maximum deviation del is equal to k e m into f c. Now, the instantaneous amplitude of the fm signal is given by e f m is equal to a sin f omega c omega m. The instantaneous amplitude of the fm signal. Now, we are talking about the fm signal. So, this fm signal has got two components. One is the fc, uh, the fc component which is the uh, carrier component and the, the message signal or the, the modulating signal. This can be easily represented as, I mean simplified as A sin theta. So, this is a theta. That theta is a function of omega c as well as omega m. So, uh, some function of carrier and modulating frequencies. Okay, that is what fm. So, we can see that A is equal to sin theta and theta is function of omega c and omega m. So, let us write the above equation uh, in, the, in the standard form. So, uh, let us... Uh, as we have seen in the earlier equation, we have found this equation number 3, f is equal to omega c 1 plus k e m uh, cos omega m t. The third equation, if you are going to replace f by, uh, you know, 2 pi f, so we will get omega this side and this is 2 pi f c, that is going to be omega c. So, if you do that, we will get an equation in this form, which is omega is equal to omega c into 1 plus k e m uh, omega uh, cos omega m t. So, this equation is something but instead of the radians uh, hertz frequency you are substituting the value in the radians frequency that is fine. Now, what we are interested in we want to calculate the value of theta here ok. Omega must be integrated with respect to time. So, we know that theta is obtained by omega or omega can also be defined as d theta by dt. So, omega the radian frequency that is defined as d theta by dt. So, we try to find out d theta d theta is equal to omega dt. So, if you want to inter if you want to get the value of theta from d theta we supposed to integrate the equation. So, already we have an equation omega and if you are going to integrate d, this particular equation with respect to dt, we will get the value of theta. Okay, I will repeat uh, the d theta over dt is equal to omega and if you, uh, you know, I mean cross multiply this particular equation, you will have uh, d theta is equal to omega dt and you are interested in theta. So, if you want to calculate theta, you have to integrate. So, if you integrate this particular equation, omega c is a constant and if you integrate uh, integrate 1, you will get t and then k, e, m, etc. are all, all constant and if you integrate cos omega m t, you will get sin omega, sin omega m t. That is going to be divided by the coefficient of, uh, you know, the, the cosine term which is nothing but omega m. So, we are going to supposed to be divided by omega m. So, here this particular uh, m is the suffix, ok. This is omega m is the suffix and here also this is omega m which is the suffix. Now, so the above equation can be further simplified by substituting the value of uh, omega is equal to 2 pi, 2 pi f. So, here also we are going to substitute 2 pi f and here also we are going to substitute 2 pi f. As a result, what you are going to get? The equation become, uh, sorry for the second term. Second term we are going to substitute uh, 2 pi f m t and 2 pi f m t. So, what is going to happen is the common term will get cancelled as a result uh, our you know equation is going to be omega c t plus delta which is the deviation k e m uh, omega c uh, sin omega m t divided by f m because the down part what you have is uh, you know 2 pi and 2 pi and the, the top 2 pi get cancelled. Uh, as a result, we are getting the answer is omega mt. So, this again mind this uh, particular uh, m is uh, the suffix m. So, we have a new equation here and uh, substitute the value of theta in the equation number 7. 7 is this particular equation. So, in this equation if you are going to substitute the value of uh, theta, so then what will have E f m is equal to A sin omega c t plus delta. So, this part is going to be the theta part which already we found it from this equation. So, E f m is equal to as we have seen E f m is equal to A sin theta. This theta value is substitute right here. So, what you get A sin omega c t plus del into sin omega m t divided by divided by f m. So, here the f m is stands for the maximum frequency of the modulating signal. Now, if you just rearrange the equation uh, by transferring uh, by, by substituting uh, del divided by f m is equal to m f, okay, then 
will find an equation E F M is equal to A sin omega C T plus M of into sin omega M T. Okay, this is small m where M F is equal to delta divided by F M. So this is the final equation of the F M. So any F M signal that can be represented by using this equation E F M is equal to A which is the amplitude or the magnitude of the carrier signal sin omega C T which is the, uh, the carrier signal frequency and uh, you know m of is nothing but the deviation uh, the maximum deviation so the deviation divided by the uh, fm which is normally called as a modulation index uh, multiplied by sin omega mt now if you look at the frequency spectrum of um, fm and that can be calculated by using the uh, Bessel function. So there is a complex uh, uh, mathematical uh, uh, equation that is called the you know the Bessel function. Using Bessel function, you'll be able to find out the the frequency spectrum of FM. So according to the Bessel function, uh, we can expand the EM, EFM. That is equal to a j zero m of sin omega c t, which is uh, the base the base frequency or the carrier frequency. Then we'll find j one m of sin omega m plus sin omega t and sin omega m minus omega c. So we can see that this, are, this is a side band. This is a side band. So this is a carrier frequency or the carrier signal whose amplitude is given by this. Whereas this is like a, a side band which is normally we can call as in the, the, in the upper side band and this is called a lower side band and uh, the frequency is like what omega m. Now if you go for this one it is supposed to be j2. This is j2 m of um, uh, sin omega c plus 2 omega m and sin omega c minus 2 omega m. So again this is going to be another side band. This is also another side band. This is the upper side band with a frequency of 2 times uh, the uh, modality frequency whereas this is a lower side band. J3 m of this is going to be sin 3 omega m and minus 3 omega m. Likewise J4 and so on. So we can find that there are infinite number of uh, side bands are available here and if you look at the uh, the uh, the frequency spectrum but you can see that this is the uh, the carrier uh, uh, signal which is indicated by fc and we will find fc plus fm this is the upper side band and fc minus fm which is lower side band fc plus 2 fm fc minus 2 fm fc plus 3 fm F3, F3, fc minus uh, you know 3 fm and so on so we can find that there are uh, large number i mean like like infinite number of side bands are you know available uh, in a, in an fm signal Now talking about bandwidth of uh, the uh, FM, there are different ways they are using and the common method uh, or, or the, the, the uh, one of the you know commonly used method for finding the frequency which is by the Carson's rule. So we will look at the Carson's rule, what is mean by Carson's rule. The Carson's rule states that the bandwidth of FM wave is twice as twice the sum of the deviation and the highest modulative frequency or in other words we can say that bandwidth is equal to 2 into the deviation plus fm max where fm max is the highest modulating frequency now look at this particular example the highest order side band uh, that is normally calculated uh, by the equation uh, m is equal to delta divided by uh, uh, fm so if m is equal to 20 kilohertz divided by uh, 5 kilohertz so we'll get you know something like the modulation index is uh, something like 4 and uh, so if you calculate this uh, value of uh, uh, 